When deciding which type of light to use for your film or video, there are three main choices, fluorescent, LED, and tungsten. Now, each of those has some pros and cons, so let's take a look at those pros and cons and find out which one might be best for any given situation for you. Now, among video makers and independent filmmakers, it seems like fluorescent and LED lighting are becoming more and more popular over time, as opposed to more traditional tungsten type lighting. But in a lot of the Hollywood productions, they're still using a lot of tungsten lighting. And I think really what it comes down to is there are pros and cons to each of these different types of lights. And I'm kind of still exploring this myself and learning some things. And recently, um, well, actually over the last couple of years, I've been using primarily fluorescent, compact fluorescent bulbs, and have been kind of, uh, oftentimes found myself sort of fighting with the color that were produced in those videos. And if you look at any of my films or videos from maybe about mid-2013 and earlier, um, if you look at my eyes, my eyes are blue. In each of my videos, the eyes are kind of a different color. And so it, it kind of is a testament to how much I've been struggling to try and get all the colors right. And I think what it comes down to is that, again, the different lights have different characteristics. So let's take a look at each of them in turn. Now, first of all, fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lighting is what I've primarily been using up until this point, and there are some really great things about it. First of all, it doesn't get super hot. It's pretty easy to power. It doesn't take a lot of energy to get a lot of light output, so that's really helpful. It's a nice soft light, so it's pretty flattering for most people's faces when you're trying to light for interviews or talking head type of videos. So there are a lot of great things about fluorescent light. Now there are some downsides to fluorescent lighting as well. Number one, they don't have the highest CRI, and even though more recently manufacturers are starting to come out with uh, high CRI bulbs, and by high CRI I'm talking about uh, color rendering index scores of 90 and plus, and those actually work pretty well, uh, but they're not perfect, and I still sometimes struggle to get the right color. If your exposure is off just by a little bit, in particular if this exposure is off a little bit and you're using compressed video like most of us are, it just seems like it's really hard to get all the colors to look natural. Some, you can usually get some of them to look right and then others will be off. And that's kind of a testament of, to what you'll see in my videos is, I think I've generally struggled to get the skin tones just right. And once I've gotten those right in post-process when I'm color grading, then the eyes sort of seem to go a strange color. But, uh, and sometimes if you get the exposure just right and everything just lines up right, it works fine. So it's really kind of a, a hit and miss type thing. Secondly, there are some safety issues with compact fluorescents. They, um, if you break them, there is some mercury in there. Different people have different opinions about that. There is, I think, no question that enough exposure to mercury is a bad thing. So how much of an issue that is for you, that's really up for you to decide. And then one last thing, which is not really an issue so much, but relative to LED lights at least, you still have to have AC power for most circumstances to power your compact fluorescent or fluorescent lighting. So while it's a lot more convenient than tungsten, which requires a ton of power, it's still not quite as portable as LED. Next up, LED lighting. I've just invested in my first LED light. They are super convenient. Great if you're gonna be on location and you're not sure what kind of power you're gonna have available to you. Um, easily battery powered because they use so little energy relative to the other types of lights. They, by nature, have a very soft type of um, character. So they're pretty good also for interviews and talking head type videos because uh, just, just by their nature soft and so that's typically gonna be pretty flattering on most people's faces. And then also the, the lamps tend to last a really long time. So um, that's super convenient as well. The, you're not gonna have to to change out lamps or bulbs um, pretty much ever. Now on the con side, one of the th cons is cost. They are a bit more expensive than the other types of lights for the most part. So I recently bought my first LED light and it has reasonable power output. It's relatively small, it's easy to carry around. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is it's they are definitely more expensive uh, in terms of output relative to compact fluorescent in particular and also to tungsten. So you're gonna pay a little bit more money for these. And especially if you're going to move into the high CRI range, so if you're looking at an Airy, Airy makes a nice Fresnel, an LED Fresnel, the L7 series, each individual light costs $2,700 US. So now obviously that's a, that's a somewhat ex extreme example maybe, for us indie filmmakers at least, and most of us don't have that, that type of money to throw at lighting, um, especially if you're going to buy multiple lights. <laughs> 
So you can see there's still some work to be done, some engineering and manufacturing things to work out before they become a little bit more affordable. The other major con with LED lighting from my perspective is they also tend to be very spiky in terms of their chromatic output. And what I mean by that is they tend to have color casts. And what I found with mine is it definitely had a magenta bluish type color cast, which made it a lot more difficult to mix with other light sources. So if you're just using LED or just using fluorescent, that's not necessarily a huge problem. But if you start mixing them with other light sources, then things get pretty wonky pretty quickly and it's difficult to get them to balance out and look pretty reasonable. Then there is the beloved by cinematographers, tungsten lighting. And tungsten lighting is traditionally what's been used for film and video production. A lot of us independent video and filmmakers now though don't really consider tungsten. And I think there are a few reasons for that which we'll cover in just a minute. But let me talk about the positives of tungsten for just a minute. And this has sort of been a revelation to me just recently as I've been fighting with color and trying to get everything looking right. Um, I read some things over at, um, the Academy's website, and when I say the Academy, I'm referring to the Academy that of, for Motion Pictures that um, awards the Oscars every year. And they have a division that does research on lighting instruments for film. And they kind of, they took what kind of surprised me as a pretty strong stance and essentially said that tungsten is really the only light type that you should seriously consider using. And, you know, obviously they're speaking to a different audience than most of us, but that was something that was kind of intriguing to me. And I think their idea was that when they look very scientifically at the other types of lights, LED and fluorescent, they were finding that those types of lights tend to be very spiky in terms of their chromatic output. So that is to say, they had this a, a, a really big spike in terms of the amount of green they put out relative to all the others. And they had these kind of funny patterns where they would put out greens and these other little, these other cr colors. Um, whereas tungsten lighting had a very smooth curve that it put out. And so the result of that was that the, the resulting film and video looked very natural. And so, in my efforts, uh, as I've looked at these lights and I've started using my, I have a, just a tungsten Fresnel, a cheap Chinese clone of the Airy 650 watt Fresnel light. I've been using that as a key light and I just put it uh, off here to my right here and then I put a scrim in between me and it and that sort of softens it. Um, what I'm finding is that it's so much easier to get the colors to look natural if that's the look you're going for. And that's always a good place to start as natural, and then you can always modify it from there. One of the other positive things about tungsten lighting is that it's fairly reasonably priced. Um, definitely more in the range of uh, fluorescent lighting and not so much in the range of LED lighting. So that's another positive as well. Then on the con side, and there are, these are probably the main reasons why most of us independent filmmakers and video People haven't really looked that seriously at tungsten, at least a lot of us. Number one, these things get hot, super hot. And if you're filming in a confined space, that can become a real problem. You can have your talent start sweating when you don't want them to sweat. Um, it also becomes a problem in terms of just handling the lights. You've got to have gloves or some other means to handle them because they get so hot that you can very quickly and easily burn whoever's operating that light. It can end up costing more to cool that room when you're shooting in that kind of scenario. and then. As far as audio is concerned, it's a nightmare to have an air conditioner going when you're trying to shoot. So it's really kind of gets kind of messy if you're in a warm situation. It can also be a serious safety hazard. Um, because those lights get so hot, the, if, if you tip one of those over and it hits a carpeting and it's hot enough, it becomes a very potential fire hazard. So there are some definite safety issues there as well. Another minor issue, well, not necessarily minor, but another issue with them or potential issue with them is that you have to replace the lamps fairly regularly. They don't last very long, especially compared to LED lights and even compared to fluorescent lights. They don't near, last nearly as long. So there's gonna be a little bit more expense from that point of view with the tungsten lighting. And probably one of the biggest issues from my point of view is that tungsten lighting uses a lot of energy. Now, I don't just say that from the standpoint of environmental consciousness, and that's obviously one factor, but it becomes a real problem when you get to a location and you're trying to power these things and you keep tripping 
uh, breaker switches because each of the circuits can't handle the amount of wattage you're trying to pull. And if, if you've got a three light setup, it's, it's not uncommon for a household circuit to not be able to support than one, more than one or maybe two of these lights. And so you've got to run long extension cables to other circuits to try and even things out and, and kind of work through that mess. So that makes them pretty inconvenient to work with depending on where you're going to be shooting. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So those are my current thoughts on different types of lights. And I'm actually in the market for another light here in the next little bit. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe a tungsten, another tungsten light might be a good choice for me for my studio use where I can, where I do have enough power to power it and uh, have enough control where I don't have to worry about mixing it with other light sources necessarily. So I'd really be interested to know the thoughts of those of you that have shot with tungsten and LED and fluorescent. What do you think is a really good choice? And is tungsten a really good choice in terms of the benefits it provides in terms of color rendering? Or are the benefits of the other types of lights more important? So you let me know. Interested to see your feedback and your input. And if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that. And we will get you more great videos on how to prove your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.